Hello everyone, welcome to today's Mix Tank episode. My name is Mark Abrams and I'll be reviewing mixes on Pure Mix's Mix Tank today. Mix Tank is a think tank for your mixes where you can submit your mix and get feedback from the Pure Mix community members. And uh, every other Monday I go live to review mixes on YouTube. Although lately we've been doing some other special things too. We've had um, awesome people talk to Andrew. We did part one of that. Uh, which is Andrew Sheps and a bunch of his previous guests came online to ask him questions. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out. Next week, we'll be back with part two. And uh, the week after that, we'll be back with a great big plugin show, um, reviewing another plugin for that. And then after that, we'll be back from Mixed Tank. So normally every other week, but we've had some special stuff pop up that we've had to do. So um, also some very fun stuff. If you missed the big, uh, the great big plugin show last week, we had Brian Lucy, a mastering engineer who's uh, well well known. He came on to debut his Axis Analog Master um, Mastering Chain, where he built an exact duplicate of his desk and then sent it off to Axis Analog. They hooked up a bunch of robotics, and then you can use that rig with a plugin from your DAW. It's pretty incredible and it sounds amazing. So. Go check out that episode if you missed it. Brian uh, gives us a whole bunch of tips for using the desk and, and different things that you can do. Um, this Friday, we have a video with one of my favorite, favorite mixers, Chris DeBron, coming out. And he's going to be deconstructing his mix of This Is A Life from the movie. Um, that features David Byrne and uh, Mitski and all kinds of stuff. It's an amazing song. Uh, Chris brings all of his expertise and, and everything into that video and it's it's really fun to watch. Other songs that Chris has mixed that I love, there's he's done a number of Beyonce songs, but um, my favorite work with him is with the artist Sohn. It's S-O-H-N, uh, just like John with an H, but with an S instead. So S-O-H-N, Sohn. Uh, he's done some amazing work with him and I really, really love his mixes and his approach. So definitely check that out on Friday. In two weeks on September 8th, we're going to be releasing another Daryl Thorpe video with Poppy. Uh, the song is called Her, and Daryl brings all of his mixing tricks to the bag and just knocks it out of the park. It's a super cool video. We were just um, just working on that this morning, and it's great. Uh, so yeah, definitely check back in on all the future content coming up. But today, we're here to talk about mix-up. So let's, uh, let's dive in here. So I've got mix-up pulled up on my screen here. And uh, for anybody who's new here, over on the left, I have a bunch of cards with mixes that have sub been submitted by Pure Mix members. And uh, over on the right, there's some info about those mixes, which is up here-ish. There you go. And then, of course, you guys are right above me in the chat. This is a community effort. So guys, please put your comments on the mix up in the chat for, um, for people to see when they watch the replay, if they're coming back to, to see what happened on their mix. Um, Mix Tank is all about the community, and uh, this show is as much yours as it is with me on the camera. So uh, to start things off, we have some people in the chat who have submitted mixes. Um, guys, if you're here, I try to get to the mixes for the people attending the live stream first. So please drop your Pure Mix username and the song that you submitted into the chat, and we'll be sure to hit it before we get out of here. So to start things off... Um, the one and only Studio Jaman, Mike Ornsby, has submitted a song, uh, and that is Trail of Lost Souls. Let's see if I can find it here. There we go. All right, I'm going to kick on HD, and in the center here, you guys can see other comments that have been left by Pure Mix members. Um, and yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's dive in. I'm going to hit play. Yeah. 
Guys, give it up for Mike in the chat. This is killer. Sounds amazing. Uh, Mike, this might be the best sounding one I think that you've submitted, in my opinion. Uh, I love this. Um, sounds fantastic. Okay, in the comments, you say something new, initial mix off the console. Did you do this all on a board? Because it sounds uh, like there's so much depth and um, space to it without uh, any of the stereo widening stuff I've heard on the, um, some of your other mixes, but this sounds fantastic. Awesome job. Um, I have a couple little things, but man, this is pretty good. So, okay. Um, first couple things, I agree with, uh, with what Tom said about um, things sounding aggressive in the 10K, uh, 3K, and 10K areas. Um, to me, it feels like there's an EQ on the mix bus that's pushing everything up in those areas because I hear it on the drums, I hear it in the guitars, uh, the vocals as well. Everything sounds like it's got a pretty big lift in those areas. Um, and it's something that, you know, if it's a EQ across the mix bus, it's not like a drastic turn it down like crazy. It's um, like just try nudging it back a little bit. It sounds like it, you know, as you were pushing it, you're like, this sounds good, this sounds good, this sounds good. And then you kept on going. Um, and maybe just a hair back would add a smoothness to the to the whole thing overall and take away some of the, um, some of the aggression. Um, not in a way that it needs to completely change the mix. Just there's a, just a hair too much. It's like poking my ear just a little bit. Um, but it sounds really, really killer. There's uh, something I'm noticing in the drum compression. So uh, I'm going to play a section in here where it, it kind of comes out of the kit and goes down to just the percussion in this, in this section. And I hear the compressor on the drums pumping a little bit. And then also in the percussion when there's um, like those high conga hits, uh, it feels like it's really smacking the attack away from it and kind of stealing some of the natural uh, transient of that. So let me play that here. And you can actually hear it in that snare hit right before too. So let me play from here. And now we're going to listen to the conga. Or maybe that's a side stick. I can't can't totally tell. But um, the cool thing about that compression is it brings up the space in the room and that's around the instrument and everything. The bummer about it is it's crushing the initial attack and making it um, a little less to discern really what the instrument is because most of the information that our brain perceives about a sound happens in the transient. So if we crush that down too much, things get a little bit fuzzy uh, for, for our brains, basically. There's probably a better psychoacoustic uh, answer about that. But what I would suggest doing is maybe to keep some of that space on there is to use that compression in parallel and see if you can get some of the dry signal back into there. As for the kit, um, as things are going, you, you kind of feel those transients get smashed down a little bit. And I think if you slowed down the attack time or um, did that compression more in parallel or just did something to let some of those transients breathe a little bit more, the whole thing would kind of open up and feel a little bit more natural. Um, if you're just trying to like control the peaks and all that, uh, perhaps there's another, another approach that you could do to that. Um, you know, again, like parallel compression is your friend on that stuff, uh, and, and might help out there, but this sounds incredible. Really, really good. Um, yeah, I'd say just check out the EQ in those areas. Uh, if it's not on the mix bus and it's on individual instruments, um, just check out those areas and, and see what you can. Uh, there was one other thing in the vocal, and I thought I heard a little bit of muddiness down below um, that was happening somewhere around here. Let me check it. So it sounds like there's some, uh, when I say muddiness, I mean really just kind of low mid resonance, right? So it sounds like there's a little bit of that in the vocal, but um, also that EQ curve uh, of it with it having the enhanced top end is kind of hiding that a little bit, but I hear it just kind of resonating down there. So maybe that's something to look at as well, but it's super, super tiny. It sounds incredible on my speakers. That was a joy to listen to. Thank you. Very cool. All right. Um, let's see what else. Whoa. Palisades. I, <laughs> Mark, Mark told me 
that he'd mail you an SPL transient designer for free. I am not going to part with my SPL transient designer. I've got the one with two of them in it. It's a, the old rack unit that has like the 80s um, purple on it and everything. I love that thing. I, you'll take it from my cold dead hands. But Mike, I'll definitely let you borrow it. Indefinitely, if you like. Okay, uh, let's see. Our next song is going to come from... Uh, we got Palisades in the chat giving away all my gear. Let's uh, let's get him up there. Okay, so we got the song Sweat. Over in the comments, it says, I just submitted this track as my first demo to a label. <laughs> nice. I'd still appreciate input on the mix and mastering so I can apply any constructive criticism for future projects. This is my first time experimenting while using clippers and some unique black box dithering magic plugins on my master chain. For this one, I tried to straddle the loudness wars line and keep the peace between dynamics police and the loudness freaks. Keep the peace between the dynamics police and the loudness freaks. Can we make a shirt out of that? That's pretty good. Uh, let's see if you agree that my mix was Switzerland in this controversy. As always, I appreciate everyone's feedback and most importantly, Mark's strobe lights. All right, I got to queue up the strobes. Right, here we go. Amazing as always. Nice. <laughs> All right. Give me an excuse to break out the uh, strobe effects. Awesome job. Uh, 
got a couple things on this one and it sounded really good overall. Um, so your sound design is always a super killer. Uh, there's some stuff in the, in the upper mids. And I remember this from a previous track that you did as well, um, where the, the upper mids kind of got a little bit grating. Um, so the, the volume of the sound effects and the, the tonal shape of them is pushing like in that, like two to four K area, like, hovering around 3K, which can really get kind of like eh, red on your eardrum. And because you have them pumped up so high in the mix, that stuff is going to cause people to turn it down. So going back to your thing about the loudness wars, you can do all the tricks in the book that you want to pump up the loudness and everything. But uh, if that stuff is so loud and, and kind of shaped in the way that you have it, people are going to naturally reach for the volume and turn it down, which is the opposite effect of what you're trying to go for with the music. So as you're climbing in dynamic and you come with this big explosion, everybody's going to go down. So I would really watch out what's happening in that range. Um, earbuds uh, or AirPods or earbuds. Um, doesn't matter if they're Apple or not. Get any earbud. Um, preferably the worst, maybe not the worst. Get some that aren't great because... Um, that's where they really suffer is like making that like 4k thing really harsh. Um, Apple ones will work for that too. If you have AirPods, uh, they'll, they'll kind of point out some of that stuff for you, but like put it on in a loud volume in your ears. And when it starts to hurt you, um, you know, to start kind of shaping some of that stuff. Uh, once that's resolved, then you can go back to, to worrying about, you know, let me get this like up in the proper loudness for the genre and all of that. Um, with that in mind, I feel like the dynamics are suffering in this one um, for a couple of reasons. One is um, just stuff getting eaten up by by the limiter and everything in the clipper that you have going on here. Uh, the I'm looking for like a lot of kick punch, um, a lot of power down the middle, uh, just kind of like slamming the beat into you and like really making you move um, with the track. And I feel like the clipper stuff is kind of eating that up. And then the volume of the sound effects being so high um, is actually masking the groove a little bit. And there's a, I um, tried to remember a time, I think it's around 120, uh, where I felt like the sound effects ate the groove uh, completely and I almost lost rhythm. So let's listen at starting at 113. I think it happens around 120-ish. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it just kind of ate up the one a little bit um, on that bar. So um, I would just watch for some of that stuff in the basic balance things. Uh, if you can use something like Listen To, uh, that's a plugin from Audio Movers that will stream the output of your DAW to a web browser. You can pull it up on your phone and you can use that to balance out some of those those sound effects and everything. I also think that those are, are kind of your calling card too. So I'm not saying like bury them in the mix. I'm just saying like bring them back to a level where the groove and the punch and the power of the music is still coming through along with your amazing sound design. Uh, I hope that that helps. Uh, thank you for submitting it as always. Um, always a blast to break out the strobes. Let me check out the chat here. Great job. Oh, and also don't worry about it. Like you already submitted that for a demo. That's, that's going to be just fine. Like as a demo thing, don't, don't like have regrets about that or anything like that from anything that I said here. Um, I think, that you did a great job on it. And uh, I think that people will hear your strengths with it. Um, also like with, with labels and stuff like that, they would let you know if they have suggestions uh, for, for adjusting the mix or, or hiring out or whatever it happens to be. But um, yeah, anyway, I think it's a great demo for it. And uh, you did a great job on here. Just watch out for some of the grading stuff and the loudness things. There we go. Awesome. All right, let's see what we got next. Nice. <laughs> That's better, Mark. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, Andrew Powers uh, drops a comment on there. Check that out in the YouTube chat. Mark, we needed this job. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, awesome. All right, let's see what we got. The next one is going to be the situation from Gord. Guys, if you're in the chat and you've submitted a song for today, let me know. Uh, username and the name of the song, and we'll hit it. Situation. Here we go. Good to see you again, Gord. Here we go. Oh, let's see the comments. Uh, so on this version, I'm hoping the vocals are sitting better. Bass and kick is strong, but not too strong. This type of snare fits in well, and I haven't used too many tracks of synths and made it uh, messy because I'm a synth noob. Synths are so fun. 
This is one of my country songs with UA Polymax synth replacing guitars. Ooh, all right, let's see. Something different The dance floor was a buzz When I asked just what was happening I heard just what it was Now I know the situation Yeah, I know the situation That I'm into That I'm into Loving you You showed me something I thought it dangerous But I took a chance My feet were moving and this was something new If I live to tell about it I wanna be with you Now I know the situation Yeah, I know the situation That I'm in Awesome, Gord. Nice job. Um, man, this is sounding really good. The uh, I'm hearing improvement on your stuff as well. This is cool after um, coming back for a while. And it's also really awesome for me, like how many of you guys come back when we do these and, and getting to hear um, progress. We've been doing this all year and uh, I feel like, like, Gord, your stuff is sounding better. Palisades is sounding better. Mike's stuff. This is all like awesome today. This is so very, very cool. And it's it's awesome that you guys are coming back. So thank you for being a part of this and for submitting and being a part of the Pure Mix family. Um, awesome job. So a uh, couple of things I heard. Um, one, I love what you did with the synths. Uh, I don't think you're a synth noob at all. And it wasn't... Um, it wasn't poking out in a weird way to me or anything like that. I, uh, it sounded like the patch fit in well and it, it worked out really well. So... Cheers on that. I had nothing to say there. Um, very cool. The uh, So yeah, we're going to talk about vocals, um, the kick and bass. I want to hear something about the bass. One second. You do just what she says. Okay, cool. So um, bass guitar, we'll just start there. It's very uh, mid-range centric, which is cool. It's got a nice like punchy tone with um, some nose to it, I would say. Uh, it can maybe use a little bit more low end to make it marry with the kick. But um, before worrying about that, let's talk about the kick drum. The kick drum is a little bit loud to me and coming out of the mix of hair. It's sitting in front of the snare drum to me. Um, and yeah, I think that that could possibly use some work, although I love the importance that you placed on it with keeping the keeping the power going um, and that drive on the bass drum. So I wouldn't say like thin it out or duck it back too much, just maybe a hair and listening to the snare kick relationship, um, kind of seeing like, can it come back a little bit, still give you that power and not sit in front of the other instruments. Um, the next thing I would go to is the... Uh, vocals so the vocals sound a little over compressed to me at points but they're also 
fairly dynamic where some words are going away a little bit and some are um, staying tr strong. And uh, with this music, it's this is a very vocal centric song to me. Um, so to keep that vocal up front, I would, uh, again, I'd go parallel compression here and I'd, I'd try to lower the distance between some of those louder phrases and the quieter ones that are getting lost a little bit. If you push a parallel up in there, it'll kind of fill in the holes where the vocal dips down a little bit without you having to compress the vocal like crazy and then turn it up in the mix. Um, it's going to sound more natural. You won't get some of the, you know, kind of nasally sounds that you can get from over compressing a vocal. Um, so yeah, parallel compression, I would say is your friend here. Um, a couple suggestions for parallel compressors. Uh, I am in love with uh, Sound Toys Devil Lock on uh, vocal parallel compression, just in the default setting that pops up with it. That thing works for me, um, I'd say 85% of the time. It's pretty freaking awesome. The other thing that I've um, fallen in love with doing since uh, we did our live stream with Michael Brower a couple, couple months back now, um, I think it was in May when we did the live Q&A session with him, but... I've fallen in love with his multiple compressor technique where he's got, you know, um, in his template, it's crazy. It's like five or six uh, different vocal compressors. And actually, uh, on this topic, I wasn't plugging this, but in two weeks, we have a blog article coming out um, that's all about Michael's uh, multiple vocal parallel compressor um, technique. And basically, that's just having, you know, a bunch of faders. It's copies of the vocals, so you can do that as a send and then make, you know, a bunch of aux inputs that are all receiving the same input. Throw um, some different compressors across them that, that give you different vibes. So uh, the devil lock isn't right for everything. Um, sometimes it can be too aggressive and, and add, like, too much saturation to it and just kind of get a little angry. Um, so in that case, I would, you know, probably look at something like a Fairchild and, uh, maybe not squeeze it as hard. I think Michael's thing is that he has all those compressors only doing like a dB of reduction or something like that. So it's not about smashing them, but he's just kind of blending in the tones and the feelings of those compressors. Um, sometimes you got to smash it and then, you know, lift it up, uh, into the mix on the fader, lift it up, lift up the fader, <laughs> um, to kind of feel, feel the parallel effect. Um, but yeah, those are those are a couple of different techniques I would try out on this and then see if you can re release some of that compression. Uh, also sounds like there's a good bit of limiting on the track overall. Uh, it's not to the point where it's not dynamic at all. There's still a decent amount of dynamic in it, but it does sound like things are getting squeezed a little bit and kind of held down. So that might be something to look at. Um, the piano, let's, let's talk about that. So I felt like it got a little bit bitey actually in the section I just played where there's a little bit of an upper mid thing that's kind of getting, you know, a little bit pokey and attacking your ears a little bit. So the upper mid might be a little bit too biting. Um, maybe you can bring some of the body back into that piano. And then I think I'm hearing a reverb on there with a really long decay as well. So uh, it's making the thing feel very spacey, but this track doesn't feel like it should be living in a swath of reverb to me. So maybe bring the decay down or bring the reverb return down for that. Uh, or the mix, if you have it on insert. Um, that might be something to check out. And uh, the affected vocal. So the one that goes super wide felt like it's a little too wide for me and kind of out of phase, and it makes my uh, kind of head get uh, swirly a little bit. So that could probably come in a little bit um, and get some of your phase coherency back from left to right on it. The other thing I had was the B3. I just hear it poking out a little bit, not poking out like too loud of the mix. I hear it making itself heard um, it, only in the upper mid. So again, like there's not much body to that thing. Uh, and I'm not hearing a lot of the low tone that makes B3 sound incredible. So that might be something to kind of tweak on. Uh, if that was, I don't think that that could be done with Polymax, but, um, if that was a VI, maybe you can kind of bring some of that back with EQ or something like that. Uh, the mids, the low mids in general in the mix feel a little bit kind of like they're dipped out to me as well so if you have something that is dipping those maybe bring it back a little bit but uh last thing is the percussion at the very end um there's a clap or something that's happening on the left and that was stepping in front of the snare a little bit to me it wasn't kind of fitting into the the gel of the rhythm section it was just kind of poking out a little bit so that maybe is something to look for but uh yeah Overall, though, Gord, like I'm, I'm hearing a lot of improvements on this stuff, and that sounded like a lot, but it sounded really good. So, uh, great job! Thank you very much for submitting and, and for coming back. Uh, so, guys, if you have tracks in here, make sure you throw them in the YouTube chat.
uh, username and song name so I can find it. Uh, just scrolling back through the chat here, I was talking about the Magic Garden mastering rig a little bit earlier. There is a coupon for that. There was a question in the chat. The coupon to go and try that rig out for free is Magic Dash Garden Dash Intro. And you can fire the rig up and, and play with it. I think it's for like two hours and you can use the coupon twice if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So that's pretty cool. It's a lot of time on there. Uh, definitely check it out. That's at accessanalog.com. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Aha, I got one. Okay. Next one is going to be California from Chris Seven Ways. Let's just try California. Sorry, tap tap. Here we go. All right. So in the chat, looking for all, all around opinion and thoughts on the songs and a deal I can't refuse. A deal you can't refuse. Well, uh, Palisades is in the chat making tons of deals that you can't refuse. He's giving away my gear. I'm not going to tell him what else I have or else it's going to be yours. All right, here we go. Sorry, I got to pause to yell at Six of One real quick. He says, man, I can no longer compete, but enjoy listening to the talent. Very cool stuff. I'm going to brag on Six of One for a second. Uh, Adrian is writing. Adrian is his, his real name that he's hiding behind of Six of One. But he's writing some incredible music. Uh, he's just 
been working away and uh, turning out incredible songs. So definitely check out Six of One on Spotify. Um, sorry, he's my friend. I'm shouting it out. But no more of that imp imposter syndrome there because uh, your stuff is amazing. Uh, definitely um, check out his, uh, he has a video on Pure Mix as well. Uh, it's a pro member mix fix with Fab DuPont. So look for that. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Cool. Thank you so much for submitting, Chris. Awesome job. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's chat about some stuff. This is this is super cool, um, guys. Before I do that, I want to um, encourage everybody to drop some Spotify links or links to your social media and all that in the chat uh, so that everybody can follow each other. Um, there's been so much amazing music since we started doing these mixed tank things. And uh, while the purpose of this is not necessarily to promote your music, um, I've had inquiries from several people asking if we can make a mixed tank Spotify playlist. Um, I don't know that we'll be able to do that, but I would like for everybody to, you know, get some get some promo out of this. We're playing your music and um, you're brave enough to throw it up there for us to comment on. So please like be encouraged to drop some links in the social media, uh, you know, Self-promote away. It's hard enough out there for a musician, so uh, definitely do it. Okay, um, and uh, Chris, I, that came to mind because I was just thinking about um, uh, the kind of bands um, that I'm listening to, like where you guys might be at in your career, uh, uh, even where you're located geography-wise and all of that. And um, yeah, I was just thinking like indie band, uh, you know, it's awesome that you put your stuff up here, so let's all... Let's all follow each other. Okay. Uh, that was random, but there you go. Okay. Um, there's a couple things to, to address in this. The first one, uh, right off the bat, um, some kind of overarching things. Uh, so this is going to, I'm zooming out pretty far here. So the first one is, um, this to me sounds like a band. Uh, everybody is talented in the band and, and you guys are doing great stuff. The melodies are cool. Uh, the singer's voice is like nailing the genre. I think it's, it's like interesting to listen to and all that. Um, it's a cool song. There's, uh, some length things to the song that if I were producing this, I might, uh, take a look at some sections and see if we could cut some space out of it. Um, but that's, you know, outside of the context of a mixed thing. So, um, basically what I would encourage you guys as a band to work on this is something that I'm hearing in the mix, but also in the choices that the players are doing. Um, think about what is the key focus of each section of the song. 
So this this applies, you know, when you're doing a mix, but at the very beginning of that, it applies to the band and how they approach the song first, right? So if we're going into a verse, the guitars um, should probably pull back so that the vocals can can step forward, right? So if you're doing an intro, like the band's ripping, they're going all out, the guitar player is loud, the part's loud, um, the choices of what he's playing and all of that are loud. You go into the verse, the you know things pull back a little bit most of the time so that the vocals can come out and step forward. And I think of this a lot, and sorry for the people who have uh, heard me rant about this before, but I think of this as players on the stage. So um, visually, as we go into a verse, I would imagine the guitar player kind of taking a step back and the singer taking a step forward, right? Uh, that would happen both in how they're playing, the dynamics of it, the, the drummer, you know, is going to come down. He's not going to be playing quite as hard. I mean, obviously it depends on the part in the song, but, uh, for the most part, that's, what's going to happen is that the dynamic is going to change on stage, uh, to allow those people to step forward. And before it matters of how you're doing balances in the mix, it matters in the parts of the players and how they're bringing that energy section by section. I like to think of going from um, section to section in the song as scene changes. So it might not be a drastic scene change, but um, as the balance has changed and as certain people step forward, you're getting a little bit of a different picture. So we're stepping into a different part of the song. Then when the next section hits, we're, we're getting another change. Um, and those, those things are all kind of dynamic and moving as they go along. Uh, so as a band, I would take time in your practices to think about like, okay, as we go into the section, what, what should happen? Should the, um, the band should, in a song that's vocal related, yes, this is a rock song, but it's got a pop format to it, um, or the song structure is, is you know, widely accessible. Uh, as a band, what needs to happen there? So talk about, you know, okay, so let's, let's bring the dynamic back a little bit and let the vocal step forward if that's called for in the song. Um, if everybody's just supposed to be full bore the whole way through, that's a thing too. But uh, just talking about that in performance coaching, I've seen it a couple times with bands where the performance coach will will kind of tell the band like, hey, if, if that person's singing, everybody should be focusing their attention on them. So both in how you're playing, your position on stage, um, your eye contact with the singer. Um, so I've seen it with a couple pop bands where they'll they'll purposely start working some of that out. So instead of a band all kind of focused on their instrument and either looking down or, you know, looking out into space and rocking out or whatever, they'll, they'll say like, Hey, on this section, what if everybody diverts their attention to the lead vocalist? It tells the audience, Hey, this is the focal point of, of attention right now. So thinking about that stuff as you, you know, kind of craft the songs, as you're producing the song, um, you can kind of make those things happen inside of the band. So, uh, that's a random thing that, um, while it doesn't seem like it applies to mixing, it all starts at the source, right? So there's that. Now in the mix, you do the same thing, right? So what can we change in the mix to, to draw more attention to the singer? What I'm hearing in these guitars is there's a lot of upper mid range, the volume's pretty high in them um, throughout and the vocals kind of competing. The vocals spread out really wide in this mix. Um, I would consider trying to harness that in and, and using the center um, a little bit more to, to give importance to the vocal. Um, but the most, most of all the guitars are just kind of louder than everything else and sort of, sort of eating everybody up, especially in the upper mid range. Uh, so in the mix, if I was given this multi-track, I would be trying to find ways to create dynamic and, and create those scene changes. So I would probably dip the guitars back a hair if I could and, um, make sure that the vocals were kind of sitting loud and proud. If, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, you're not necessarily trying to make a mix a pop song, but a great example of this I've said before is the Foo Fighters. Daryl Thorpe is a master of this. The The snare drum is kind of like out in front and the lead vocal is just kind of right behind it, which still gives it that intensity of not being a pop song where the vocal is way out front, um, but you can kind of hear everything and get the power of it. Uh, so going into the weeds a little bit more, uh, the guitar tuning is the first thing that stuck out to me on this. So the intonation of the guitars, you guys may have tuned, uh, before you did all of the takes, but if the guitar's intonation is out, you're going to have problems, um, throughout the whole thing. And I'm hearing that in the bass and the guitars. So guitar tuning, uh, is super important and, uh, make sure you stay on top of that. Take your guitars to get set up if you don't know how to do it. Um, there's a number of free resources on YouTube. Uh, Gibson has a great video about uh, setting up your guitar intonation at home if you want to do it yourself. Uh, and then we can go to um, the next thing would be vocal tuning. So there's there's a couple um, spots where the vocal um, is falling a little bit flat. 
And I just want to kind of remind, I'm going to talk about a couple of things in this suite, but uh, as a Pure Mix member, you have access to Melodyne. There's a, it's not a Studio Melodyne, I think it's Elements, but you go up to the circle with your name, you hit Manage Profile, and then you go to Plugins and Services, and you get all of this stuff with your Pure Mix subscription. So you have access to uh, Melodyne Essentials 5. You could do some light vocal tuning with that um, and try to get things back into in the shape. And then of course there's a billion other plugins, which um, I won't mention except for drum replacer. Cause the next thing I want to talk about is the drums. Um, so the drums sound to me like they were played on uh, like a MIDI drum set and uh, they're sort of lacking um, some, some depth to them. Uh, some of the samples that are in there, are, they sound a little bit hollow. The snare sounded a little hollow to me. One of the things you could do with a MIDI drum set is um, one, record the MIDI into your DAW. Two, if you are using a MIDI drum set and you're you're kind of limited to that with your with your recording setup, maybe um, you don't have enough mics or uh, that's just what you got and that's what you want to use, that's totally cool. If you can get real cymbals on that thing, you can still mic up overheads on it and you'll have real cymbals that don't have the sample issues um, that can be kind of heard in the electronic kit. So um, that's two options there. And then you could replace kick, snare, toms, and all that uh, inside of there. So drum replacers uh, available inside of the Pyramid Suite. That is absolutely by far my favorite drum replacement plugin. It's incredible. Uh, it will actually listen to the input signal and divide it into five different sections. You can go in there and decide what is bleed and what is not. Um, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, so definitely check out drum replacer. And then um, Splice is a great source for samples. Uh, they include some with the plugin as well. So that's something to look at. Um, other thing was like uh, the kick drum. I'm, I'm losing the kick drum. He's doing some double bass rips and stuff in the solo. Uh, need a little bit more attack on that kick uh, just to get it to kind of poke through. But you don't want to lose all the low end either. So just look at like boosting, you know, some 5K or something like that. The kick drum did sound a little muddy to me overall. If you don't sample replace, maybe try cutting, uh, you know, around 100 hertz. There was some woofy stuff in there that didn't have the bottom, um, you know, 60 hertz push that we like from uh, kick drums in that genre. Uh, other than that, uh, there's some timing issues throughout. Editing is your friend. Um, I know it's not always the easiest thing to learn. There's some videos on Pure Mix, uh, Beat Detective videos. Uh, ben Lindell's video on Beat Detective on Pure Mix. Uh, I still use that technique to this day. It's amazing. Uh, definitely check that out. I'm losing the bass guitar. The overall mix shape uh, feels a little bit scooped to me. So it's like the mids are being sucked out and the top and bottom are being boosted. Maybe check out whatever's going on in the mix bus with that. Uh, and then the timing coming back in from the chorus, it sounded like somebody was just starting a little bit earlier than, than everybody else there. So, um, those are all things that, you know, you can slice in a DAW and just kind of slide around and pocket them. Uh, same with the lead vocal. It could just kind of be pocketed a little bit. Um, that sounds like a whole lot of stuff, but, um, if you're just starting out, like this is all stuff that everybody learns and, um, and all of that. And I think that you have something really good going, uh, with, with the band and with the songs and, and everything like that. So keep going. It's awesome. And thank you so much for submitting. I hope that that was useful to you. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, the, the tuning on the guitar is drop D at 437 Hertz instead of 440. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what was, what was the reason that you wanted to do that? I'm curious, uh, that you went to 437. Is that just because of the drop D thing? Um, pretty interesting. Cool. Uh, great job on here. Okay, so Brad Heck uh, submitted a 60-second piece. We're going to check that out. Let me just see if I'm missing anybody else before I move on here. I got Zach and Tom. All right. Oh, a comment about the uh, the Devil Lock as a parallel vocal compressor. Um, with that thing, uh, just to give you a general idea of that, I usually, I have that on a separate fader and I blend it up to taste. Um, and it totally depends on your gain stage, but I usually end up like something like 12 dB lower than my regular vocal, but that's so general and it changes all the time. Another thing you can do with parallel compression, um, just to push this in there, uh, you can automate it in different sections, right? If you need the vocal to be more chill in the verse, you can bring the parallel compressor down a little bit. And then obviously on the chorus, if you need to push it, you can you can bring up the parallel comp to 
to you know sort of reduce the dynamics a little bit and and bring the vocal forward so two things on that that are fun all right i'm just vomiting at the mouth today okay luca.e piano forte let me make sure i write that down we're going to go to john huston next so that's luca.e all right here we go john huston Ah, oh, Jason Mraz, I'm yours. All right. Hopefully YouTube doesn't shut us down for copyright stuff, but <laughs> let's try and play it. So uh, this one, I believe, was mixed on Pure Mix by Tony Mraz. So you can watch a video of that. And in the comments, you say, brought out vocal effects in the beginning and brought them in when the band starts playing. I shortened up the plate time a little. For the low end, I took out 80 to 100 on the kick and added a subharmonic plug in at 36 hertz. Getting low. And the bass guitar now has a general uh, 60B shelf at 60 and a boost at 300 and a level brought down. Awesome. All right, here we go. I've been spending way too long checking my tongue in the mirror And bending over backwards just to try to see it clearer But my breath fogged up the glass And so I drew a new face and I laughed I guess what I'll be saying is there ain't no better reason To rid yourself of vanities and just go with the seasons It's what we aim to do Our name is our virtue But I won't hesitate no more, no more, it cannot wait, I'm yours, well, open up your mind, I see like me, open up your plans, damn you're free, I look into your heart and you'll find that the sky is yours, so please don't, please don't, please don't, there's no need here to complicate, cause our time is short. Awesome. I'm going to go back just a little bit. I want to listen for one thing before I comment on it. Here we go. And one more thing. Okay, uh, it looks like you've submitted this before, probably. Um, some of those comments that you have, uh, like you have a 60B shelf at 60 and a boost at 300 and the level was brought down. I'm guessing um, uh, for the low end, you took out 80 to 100 on the kick. So I'm guessing that you've had this up before and you, this is another mix um, of that. So uh, I'm actually gonna go against one of the things that you did on there um, and this is kind of zooming out again. Um, you're getting philosophical, Mark, today. Uh, but I would take a look at like what the important elements of this production are as you're going through. Like, what are the main drivers of the song? It's that up rhythm. It's the reggae thing um, more than it is the downbeat of the kick. But there's a lot of importance placed on the downbeat of the kick and or on the kick drum in general. Um, it's very very fat in the bottom, which I'm guessing is some of the sub 
subharmonic plugin that you did, and it's putting emphasis on that beat versus on the snare or on um, the the two and the four of like what the what the guitars are doing there. So possibly putting the snare in more of an important role here would help push the groove along better. And uh, one other thing with low end, and this is this is true with balances and and all the things that we do, compression, balance, all of it has an effect on the groove. So, for example, on this one, if the two and the four are being accented with the with the reggae um, genre or with the pattern going on, um, if you act if you put the importance on the kick drum, which is playing on the one, uh, then the groove of that completely kind of falls apart or doesn't come across as much as it should. Um, but if you lowered the kick drum, took some of the bottom out of it, which would take away some of the importance and the priority that the your ears are giving the kick drum because of its size, uh, you'd probably feel the reggae pattern a little bit more. As far as identifying the drivers of the song in reggae, I usually feel like it's bass. Um, it's with whatever's doing the upbeat there, uh, ukulele or guitar or whatever it happens to be. Um, making sure that those things are are put forward and just see if it is making your body move in the right way with the reggae thing. Now, the players and um, and this mix, too, were making me feel great at the beginning of it. Um, so I definitely got got the groove, like, you know, the feeling of it and everything, and I uh, was definitely enjoying it. But I would I would check out the priority thing, and that's going to tell you how to balance it. So how long or how loud should the kick drum be? It should be whatever priority after asking yourself a few of these questions um that's how loud you should make it right so if it's uh, it's not the most important thing then it shouldn't be the loudest thing in the mix uh or have the most low end or the most size to it so um hopefully that that made some kind of sense there i just blacked out for a second but uh other stuff i heard the vocal feels a little bit compressed to me um and like there's some saturation happening on it because of the um however it's being pushed I would consider letting that breathe a little bit more. And there was something else I had. Uh, the bass guitar, I feel like it actually come up in the mix. That was the thing that I was going to say that was coming against it. And that's mostly, again, because of the importance of, of it in the song and the arrangement and the groove and all of that stuff. So I hope that that's all useful. Um, let me see if there was something else I had. Uh, the guitar on the left, you have it um, up in the mix, which is exactly what I was just talking about. It is giving the importance to that two and four. Um, the one on the right feels a little bit out of balance to me because uh, the one on the left feels a little bright. So I love the the volume balance that you have going on it, but it might be a, just a hair too much top on it, and then that is making the other guy feel dull. So I would try probably bringing down a little top in the one on the left and then um, adding a little bit of presence to the guitar on the right. That melody um, that it's doing is is also one of the hooks of the song and, and needs to be an important feature thing too when it's playing and not competing with the vocal. Hope that that helps. Okay. All right. Let's see here. So... Um, yeah, and just check out the vocal compression and the distortion on there. Somebody made a comment. Uh, Zach says, sounds awesome. Maybe a little DSing on the vocal, but overall, great job. Yeah, so the DSing might clear up, too, if some of that compression is released. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Chris, that's awesome about um, just choosing the 437 thing. That's that's great. Yeah, just um, if you can get it intonated at that at that tuning then that's going to be pretty cool which yeah if you try a different tuning like that if you leave 440 and go to 437 you're going to have to set the guitar up again so that would cause some issues okay let's see if i got any oh yeah we had um brad heck i think was one on here did any of you guys put social media links in the chat come on come on stop being so humble <laughs> no humility is a great thing but you guys really should post some links in there that would be great Mostly because I want them. <laughs> I want to go back and listen to some of this stuff. Okay. Uh, next one is going to be Zakatom. I think I'm going to spell it completely wrong. Ah, here we go. My bad. I like the name of the song. 
Okay, uh, do you think the energy of the mix ebbs and flows nicely throughout the arrangement? The artist loves hard panning guitars. Uh, do you think the track has a solid enough balance, especially among the guitars? Let's see. Calm down and we can play it safe I know we can find a place where there's comfort Where it's not my problem There's somewhere I'd rather be My bad But I'm not your dad It's just what you said I know what you said And it's bumming me out I'm not sure what about it Cool song. That's great. Very nice. Um, Zach and Tom, are you in this band? Uh, it says the artist loves hard panning guitars. So I'm guessing that they're your client. Uh, you're recording a band. Uh, but the band's fantastic. Great job if you produce this. Great job. Um, yeah, this that was cool. That was a fun song. Okay. Uh, overall stuff. So uh, I'm going to um, link back to what I just said about the, the balancing thing. So uh, what I'm hearing right now is the vocals are very loud, the drums are quiet, and the guitars are kind of up with the vocal. Uh, there, there's not much size to much in the mix right now, so everything feels a little bit tiny. Um, things that you can do about that. So uh, this is a punk song. It's kind of got an indie vibe to it, so you might not want to go like... Um, full-on turnstile production or like pierce the veil or uh you might want to stay away from some of that that tonality it doesn't sound like it's going for a major label like big sheen kind of sound if that makes sense um but there there are some cool things so uh i would point again i'm on a daryl thorpe kick today because i've been uh, working on that new poppy video um that he has coming out in two weeks uh two weeks let me make sure i'm telling you the right date yeah that that comes out september 8th so two weeks from friday um, but Daryl is the king of this stuff. It's, he does such a good job on it. And it's not, it's like a different style of rock production. So you have like, let's say that you have Pierce the Veil on one side and you have Foo Fighters on the other. Foo Fighters has a more natural sound. The drums are not like sample replaced and, um, it feels like a band playing. And then, um, Pierce the Veil doesn't necessarily not feel like that, or maybe like, uh, Avenged Sevenfold or something like that. Like you get sample drums in there, everything's super tight and precise. Um, everything's smacking and loud and up front and it sounds super polished and all that. Uh, this feels more like it's on the other side of that. So all of that to say, I would point you to, um, Daryl Thorpe, uh, his, Foo Fighters mixing video, which is with him with the DGs, which was their BGs cover band. Um, we did a, a video with him mixing that. He's got some other ones on there. There's a Foster the People, um, Future Elevators was another one. Uh, check out Daryl's stuff because he's he's awesome at this. And uh, in the DGs one, he talks a lot about um, guitar tones and volumes and where to put those things. Uh, so. In an indie thing, that's one of those ones where I like to have the snare just kind of over top of the vocal, right? Like it's you, 
you can hear him all the time, but he sounds like he's trying to get through it. And that adds some of the energy of like, there's some angst in this voice. And I think like, if you put it so that he's like, kind of almost fighting to break through and like talk and, and speak and sing and all of that, it adds some intention to the, uh, to the aggressiveness of the music. And it would also just kind of bring the drums forward in a cool way. I would also kind of work on the EQ of the drums. They sound a little bit muffled and a little, um, uh, dull sounds like a really negative word, but they just, they're lacking like some dimensionality to them. Some, uh, size i guess but uh detail i guess would be the other thing they also sound very mono which is okay uh but to go to your question about the balance uh and the panning on the guitars i feel like i've got a lot of information in the center and then i've got guitars hard pan left right 100 percent, and i don't have much happening between zero and out in 100 so the mix feels very separated to me it doesn't feel like a cohesive band playing together it feels like i've got one thing over here one thing over here and then everything else right in the center and nothing in between. There's no spillage. There's um, not much happening in the stereo image in between those things you can do about that. Uh, I would try adding a room, a commonality to all of the instruments. So uh, UAD's Ocean Way is amazing for this. Sunset Sound has a great one, or sorry, T-Rex has an awesome one from Sunset Sound uh, for room, room reverbs. And I think they have some other ones. There's like a Fame Studio one or something like that. But any of those room simulators are really, really cool uh the ones i mentioned specifically are great um the uh i would try like placing everybody in a similar room so the guitars uh and the drums and that would kind of add fill in some space in there not so that you make it reverby just so that you get some some extra size to it i think you could also do for some more low mids in the mix that would probably help as well um but yeah overall i, I think it's really cool let me see what else i got here uh I would play with the balance, some with the drum tones, uh, and fight against the everything feeling separate. Oh, the bass guitar sounds fantastic. I love that sound. It sounds great. Great job on that. Don't touch it. <laughs> so, uh, no, that's really cool. I hope that that's useful. Thank you so much for submitting. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, no, you were fine on the level, Zach. That's totally okay. Uh, do, 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 do. We all have volume knobs, except when I start talking, I'm going to blow you out. But, you know, it's just an audio show. Who cares about that kind of stuff? Let's see who else I got submissions from. Guys, if I haven't gotten to you yet and you've put it in the chat, um, do me a favor and remind me on there. I might have lost it in the scroll. Okay, let's see here. This is from Luca.e. And here we go. Uh, he says, this is my first EDM song. Thanks for listening. Thanks for submitting.
Luca, that's killer. I love this song. That was great. Um, yeah, the intro effect with the concentrate thing was was great. That I love the panning that you're doing there. That feels really glitchy and cool and uh, fantastic. And then the I love the juxtaposition against the um, the voicemail message. Uh, you know, concentrate, and then you've got this voicemail message, it's like it's going off in your head. That's fantastic. Uh, very, very cool song. Um, I'm gonna grab a prop. One second. Got it. All right. Prop. Okay. So speaker, right? Um, one of the things I want to talk about is frequency balance and, and tilt. So I've tried to do this with my hands before on the show, but, uh, specifically related to, there's some stuff happening in the two to three K range on, on this track. That's really poking out of the mix. Um, so I grabbed my prop too early. I was excited to grab it. Okay. Uh, one of the plugins in the suite. Uh, is the Pulsar 1178. And one of the reasons that I love that thing so much is because the sidechain feature is really, really useful in it. Uh, let me pull up their website real quick. Pulsar 1178. So I want to talk about this and, and how you could attack some of these, th these things here. I think I did a plug-in show on this as well, if you want to check that out. Okay, so on the left of this guy, um, you have a sidechain EQ, and you can basically tell it what the detector should be looking for, right? Uh, basic, you know, how a, how a sidechain works in a compressor. Um, so for this, specifically on that voicemail message, when she gets into that, that range that it rings out, it jumps out of the speakers and kind of pokes your ear a bit. Um, same thing as before, if you listen to this on some earbuds and it's hurting you, then it's too loud or there's too, um, there's too much kind of upper mids going on. So what I would do if I was mixing that specifically, I'd grab the slow band and I'd go, you know, probably up to like 1K or something. I'd grab the top and I'd bring it down to like four or five or something like that, probably five. Um, and then I would dial it in so that that voicemail just gets smoothed out a bit. You don't want to suck the life out of it. You don't want to hear the volume drop after, you know, she says the first word. I would play with the attack and release times to make that whole thing smooth out. But uh, this, the FabFilter Pro C2 uh, also works really well, but you have this one included in your Pyramix suite. That's why I pulled it up. Um, and I would, I would just smooth that guy out. There's some other elements of the mix that kind of do that too. And the brightness of those things and the hi-hats makes the kick and the snare feel a little bit um, small and uh, lifeless isn't the right word, but there's not much happening uh, in that two to 4K range. So why I grab my prop, uh, when I'm thinking about balance for elements, like obviously there's volume, but it's also a thing about how forward are they coming? Things that have a lot of top mid range like that, they're going to kind of poke out of the speakers and lean forward out of it. So, you know, if this is our speaker here. Um, I would imagine that the sound would be kind of going like this out of the speaker, right? So the, the low end of it is still kind of back at the cone, but the top end is just kind of leaning forward and poking out. That's the visual that my, um, my ears get, I guess, when I'm mixing something and I feel like it's kind of poking out. I'm like seeing it like this, and I'm using those tools to just kind of get everything to, to line up. Unless for some reason you want to do that, but just know it's a tool. Um, so in this one, I felt like a lot of things were kind of leaning out like this, uh, especially in that 2 to 4K range, and just kind of popping out of the speakers and poking at me. And put my prop down. Sorry. Uh, so that's something I would I would just kind of listen for if you're mixing on speakers. It's it's something that like if you can kind of imagine that and then build a visual in your mind for it, it can kind of help you just kind of um, use your ears to place things with each other. Maybe that makes no sense. I promise I'm not on drugs. Uh, okay, so let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah, I think uh, just. The the kick specifically sounded like it had a lot of low mids and not much happening in the sub range. And I kind of just wanted to like move it down in the, the frequency spectrum so that it had some support underneath the track. And then the snare felt a little bit muffled because the hats feel so bright. I would just kind of listen to those two things and then thinking about um, thinking about the brightness, the balance of the EQ between those things, if you can kind of get them to be more equal with the equalizer. Um, but yeah, I hope that that helps. It's just a, another way. That that's kind of how I envision EQ and how I think about it. Um, I'm looking for another element in the mix that tells me like the hat, for example, would be the brightest thing in the mix. So that's my 
goal or whatever. Or that's my bar for like, here's bright in this mix. This is bright. Now let me play with the top of the snare and get it relative in a position that I like it. Hope that helps. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Juan is in the chat room. Let's see what Juan has here. Uh, Mr. Lee has a song too. Let me just write these down so I don't forget them. All right, so we've got Mr. Lee. Guys, if there's anybody besides Mr. Lee and Juan that I haven't gotten to yet, please let me know. Okay, let's hit Mr. Lee. Here we go. Luca, thank you. That song was really fantastic. That was fun to listen to. Make it work. There it is. All right. HD. Here we go. Killer, man, great playing, great song, great vocalist, jeez, great bass player. Come on, what else What else do you say about that? No, it's awesome. Thank you so much for submitting this. I want to play this section back here. I'm going to be listening for a couple things. Um, first thing I'm listening for is the marriage between these electronic sample drums that you have in and then the acoustic kit. And then when we go into the breakdown, I might have heard a timing thing on the work, so I'm going to listen for that. And then we're going to listen to the background vocals that hit the section after it. Here we go. <laughs> Move, 
Okay, uh, we'll just stop there and then we'll talk about the background vocals. So I, I was wrong, it's not an electronic thing. Uh, it's just a clap percussion thing. Um, okay, there's a bigger thing I wanna talk about that's not that, so we'll go to the timing thing. Something's happening here that's making me lose the groove and instead of like that downbeat feeling huge going into the last section, it's, it's not. Um, let me see what that is. One more time. It's happening on an and, and I think it should be on a beat. Uh, it feels odd placement to me where I don't know where the beat is, so when the downbeat comes, I'm confused and not in a good way for me, but that could be very personal, so don't worry about it too much. If you like it, it's good. All right, let's listen to the background vocals here. Okay, so... Overall, I think that the thing could use some excitement in the upper mids, but these uh, I Can Make It Work vocals, let's just take a look at those one more time. Okay, so I'm not hearing a lot of uh, top end or uh, upper mid excitement to those. They sound a little bit muffled to me. Um, and your volume placement tells me that they should be like, that's the thing at that moment. Uh, but EQ wise, they're feeling a little bit dull. Uh, to me, so I think like having some brightness on those and maybe a little bit of upper mids would be cool But there's a lot of other things in the mix that I think could also use that as well one this thing's grooving really well I want to check out one more part Man that clocks well, that's awesome uh, very cool. Okay, so Overall, the kick, snare, and bass are on top of the vocal in this mix. It's not necessarily a bad thing. The, the movement feels great on the whole thing. Um, it's just something to be aware of. If I had to guess, I would guess that the vocal came in last on this song. Like you worked on the mix with everything else and then you had to fit the vocal into that. And that's because everything else is taking up a lot of space. Um, it's kind of dark and there's a lot of like low mid stuff happening there. Uh, I could be totally wrong about that, but if I had to guess, that would be my guess. Um, because it doesn't sound like the vocal is sitting in a place of importance again. Um, but that's also a taste thing. I think the groove is great. Uh, if, if I had to make a suggestion for it, I would say like solo the bass and the vocal and listen to the balance between those two things. Um, see which one you're telling the listener to, to focus on. And then bring in some of the other elements, like bring them in one by one and just see where they sit in comparison to the vocal and if that's the vocal level that you want. To me, it's behind everything. So it's like, you know, bass, kick, uh, the vocals back here. Everything's kind of living in front, which again, isn't bad. The groove is cool. It's just a uh, personal taste thing. So uh, don't put the vocal in last if you do. Um, that's That makes it hard to find a good space for it. I hope that that helps. Uh, yeah, that's all that I really had. This is fantastic. Um, great job. So I hope that that's useful. I feel like I, I didn't say enough there, but yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, okay. So, Habig asks, where do I submit a track? So go to puremix.com and hit Mix Tank. If you're a Puremix member, you can submit a track there and then we can check it out. Somebody else asked if it was too late to submit a track. It is not. I'm going to go for a little bit longer. If you haven't had a chance to submit yet, you can still do it. All right. Our next track is Andrew Powers. Uh, Mr. Lee, that, that was really fun. Thank you again for submitting that. Very cool. All right. Andrew Powers. I need your username. Let's see. Andrew Powers. He said, me. Uh, Andrew, do you have a song on here? Let me know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Frontlines. Frontlines is your submission. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Frontlines. There we go. 
That's weird. I didn't find it with your name. I'm trying to find a sound and attempting some vocal recordings. I'm using Pitcher in FL Studio, and it's rough, but I just want to imagine my tracks with vocals. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Andrew, great job. That's awesome. Um, this is this is super cool. Uh, you say that your level is a noob. If you're a noob, you're on a good path here. Come on, there's something in the back of my throat and it's driving me crazy. Okay, um, I want to go right to this section. We'll talk about the vocals and stuff in a second, but uh, right where the melody comes in. And we're going to focus on the volume of the arpeggiated synth versus the melody. Here we go. Okay, so um, there's there's a lot of widening on here, which would skew your perspective of it. Uh, this sounds like it could be a headphone mix too, because I'm not hearing a lot of focus on the center, except for the kick drum being very loud. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of widening put in on everything. And widening is kind of like wine. It tastes amazing. And then you drink too much and you wake up the next day and realize it was too much. Um, so the I would watch the widening on there uh just things are getting a little bit phasey it's easy to do in headphones you turn it up it starts sounding really good you keep going you keep going you keep going and then you realize that it's too much if you can't mix on speakers or if you are mixing on speakers uh check out your placement on this and um just see if you can get away with less stereo widening to to keep things kind of focused what happens when you do too much widening is you lose phase coherency and things start getting hollow and comb filtering and all of that um and it just kind of throws off your perspective for balance. So the arpeggiated synth is very loud. It's louder than the melody. Uh, and then we have the vocal. Okay, I guess we're going to this. There we go. Uh, I got to pull your thing back up. Hey, that's me. Okay, Andrew Powers. Uh, Andrew. What was the name of the song? Um, ah, sorry, Andrew. Let me find it. Uh, Front lines, thank you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so one more time listening. Okay, um, widening on the vocal as well. It's so wide that it's, uh, I hear nothing in the center. I hear everything just kind of spread and wrapped around my head. Um, and it feels like it's phasey and kind of hollow sounding. So see if you can get away with that or bringing that down again. Uh, Little Girl is a long way with stereo widening. There's other ways to widen your vocal. Um, short tap delays are great. You don't have to do a bunch of taps. You can just do one slap and, and get some width that way. Micro shift from Sound Boys is perfect. Uh, there's a number of things that do things like micro shift. It's basically pitching the vocal down nine cents and up nine cents um, in the left and right, respectively, or maybe it's reverse, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you're slightly detuning the vocal in in the, the sides. Um, so that's a cool trick. 
uh, reverb is your friend sometimes, but short reverbs uh, for that kind of stuff. And let's see what else. Uh, yeah, the synth is beautiful. The patch and everything is really beautiful. Uh, you said that you're using um, Pitcher or something like that, or Repitch, what is it? Uh, Pitcher in FL Studio. So I don't know if that's like a vocal synthesis plugin or if you're doing retuning. Uh, if that's your voice, you have a cool voice. That's awesome. Um, if you need tuning stuff, again, you have access to Melodyne inside of the um, Pure Mix suite of plugins. Um, but yeah, the auto-tune thing fits for the style of music. The other thing I wanted to comment on, I just remembered, I think I'm getting tired, guys, uh, the snare drum. So let's listen to that. Okay, so focus on the attack of the kick and the snare drum. Let's listen to those. So the kick has a lot of snap on it, which makes it bright, and that in itself isn't a bad thing. But the snare does not have any snap on it, um, and it's just kind of going poof. Uh, in the background. We hear a lot of like the bottom snares in there, but it doesn't have a sharp transient to it that is equal with the kick. So not necessarily a bad thing, but again, if I was thinking about it in terms of depth, the kick drum's here and the snare drum's way back here. So uh, when you look at your picture, how do you want to see it? Um, again, that's that's another one of those things. It's like speakers are fantastic for that because you can determine things like depth. Uh, it's much harder on headphones. Hope that that helps. Um, Awesome. Okay, I think that's what I got for that one. Um, it's very, very cool though. Just w uh, work on the balances, watch out for the stereo widening. Your choice of synth sounds or your sound design is beautiful on this. Your melodic choices are beautiful. I know that's all outside of mixing, but it's got a really cool vibe to it. Keep going, because you're gonna do some awesome things. And this is already really cool. So I hope that that's useful. Thank you so much for submitting. Thanks for, uh, going on YouTube with it. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see. Chris Strickler, let's just see if it uh, maybe lied to you and it took it and just didn't tell you. No. I don't think so. Um, can't remember your username. Let me know. Uh, Brad Heck submitted one. Here we go. This is Funk Friday. Nice. Uh, here we go. This is a weekly podcast that just mixed and submitted previously. See if Mark finds a strawberry. All right. Let's see. Here we go. That's awesome. All right, listening to one more thing. It's crazy how much strobe lights affect your ears. Hold on. Man, that's killer. I barely have anything. Two things, kick and snare. Same thing as I was just kind of talking about. Kick drum um, is a little bit loud and has a lot of attack. Snare drum has a little less attack than that, and it's a little bit behind the kick drum. Um, you obviously understand groove. <laughs> so uh, I would say that the kick is maybe out just a hair too much, but it, it feels, feels really good. My voice is just dying, guys. Um, 
I would maybe pull it back a hair and then maybe add a little brightness on the snare, but not too much, just a click. Uh, but other than that, I got nothing, which is basically nothing because none of those things matter too much. Um, yeah, that's all I got for that, Brad. That's amazing. Great job. Thank you so much for submitting that. All right. Uh, does anybody else have anything in here? It is so good, right? <laughs> Adrian, yeah, everything has been amazing in here. Adrian, we need one of your songs. You're in the chat. I got to uh, I got to put you on on display here. You don't have to since it's going out to the internet and, every, and everything, but uh we should do one of yours. Okay. Make me new has uploaded Jonathan Spackman. Here we go. Make me new. I got time for uh, probably like two more on here. All right, here we go. Searching for answers again and again Then I heard you calling and my life was never the same I'm going to point something out uh, right here so we can listen to it as we go. Um, there's, this is, uh, it's sounding really good overall so far um, where we're at. I want to point something out in the vocal. It's got a lot of low mid stuff and um, this is low mid resonance. So uh, I've been talking about it in other songs, but I definitely hear like a build up in that like 160 to 200 ish area, blah, blah, blah. Numbers doesn't matter. Just find it with an EQ and do your thing. Um, but yeah, low mids, uh, just kind of resonating. It sounds like the singer's really close on the microphone and just, just resonating and um, could use some of that cleaned up a little bit. Uh, Pro Q3, great um, to just kind of find that sort of stuff. I would definitely deal with this with the static EQ. And uh, last thing I'll talk about with this, I was going to possibly recommend Gulfos or uh, Sooth 2. Gulfos and Sooth 2 deal with problems as they arise, right? So basically... You've got Pro Q3, which deals with um, deals with problems in a permanent way. It's just like I put a band in, it's on, unless you automate it or use dynamic EQ. But you can either EQ that band out, or you can use something that just reacts to it, like a dynamic EQ or a dynamic band in Pro, Th Pro Q3. Um, this one, I would say, is a static thing. So uh, one thing that I've said on the show before is don't deal with a temporary problem with a permanent solution. Um, but in this case, it's a permanent solution, so you would use that here. Okay, here we go. Something was missing, I couldn't explain. Searching for answers again and again. Then I heard you calling, and my life was never the same. Reaching through darkness to cross the divide. You bridge the distance from your heart to mine. that resonance just moved up so now it's it's in a harmonic of where it was um it went up into like for my ear somewhere between 250 and three something um so for that you might try surf eq but you could also just automate or automate another band in to deal with that resonance but there's definitely some resonance happening in the low meds here we go
Okay, just want to look at another section. Nice job, Jonathan. Very cool. One second. Okay, so I'm listening to the drums, the bottom of the kick and the snare tone from here to the ending. So listen, uh, uh, this section and then the end section. Okay, so the bottom's different there. A um, couple things here. Uh, so the vocal is way more important in this section because all that size is taken out of the kick drum. The vocal gets to come forward in that. Whereas at the end here, when the drums are massive, um, it kind of gets pushed back because it's not. We're not being told it's as important, right? So listen to. We also have that synth on top. Okay, so I like the balance on this section. Um, it's interesting that you took low end out of the drums there. Um, that's cool. So Six of One had a good, good question. Uh, he's wondering what speakers you're mixing on. I'm wondering as well, if you could let us know in the chat. Uh, real drums. Those shouts nearly killed me trying to get them right to sit right. Yes, those will do that. Uh, one second here. My voice is like, you're done. You're done talking. Uh, okay. So yeah, let us know what speakers you might be mixing on. Um, so one one like pitfall that we can fall into is, uh, and I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that you did this, Jonathan, um, but the kind of some of the things that are going on in the mix tell me that it might have kind of happened. Um, one, monitoring is super important, so I am curious about uh, Yamaha HS7. Okay, cool, with Sonarworks. So um, I'm hearing a lot of bottom. There's a lot of sub going on. I'm also hearing a lot of top, and then there's that low mid thing with the vocal, but then there's not much low mids elsewhere in the track. Um, so there might be a monitoring thing happening there. Uh, even with Sonarworks, sometimes that, that stuff can happen. Your room... You can't solve um, physical problems in the time domain usually. Like if you have standing waves or a low ceiling or no um, treatment on the wall, sonar works can't reduce decay time in your room, stuff like that. Um, so there, there might be some things to work on there. Uh, yeah, if, if you're not hearing like the low mid thing in the vocal, for example. Um, also checking on, like find a pair of headphones that you love, listen to a ton of music on them, get to know them. Um, it sounds, you're going to like, this is going to take away all my credibility, but, um, where are they? They're in my pocket. Maybe. Yeah, there they are. These guys are not bad. And they are the thing that, um, a whole lot of listeners are going to hear your music on. They're the Apple AirPods. Um, if anybody isn't an Apple fanboy and doesn't know what those are. Uh, okay. So I would recommend 
grabbing the Gen 2s are actually really good. The sound is pretty good. Now I'm documented on the internet saying that, but they, they do sound really good. And when I heard the Gen 2 version of these, um, I was like, I actually wouldn't mind if people listen to my music on that. But you can, you can figure out a lot of problems with them. Uh, all right, that stuff aside, um, one thing that's important to do in mixing is not to just try to make everything sound amazing. This goes back to what I was saying before, and I don't want to be a broken record, but like deciding what's important in the mix, what should be where uh, based on priority. And these are things that like, when you start a mix, um, just listen to the rough, if you have a rough. If you don't have a rough, listen to the static mix that's up on the board when you first pull it up or whatever. Just listen to the song. Don't touch anything. Don't put anything in folders. Don't color code. Just sit and listen and ask yourself what is... Ask yourself questions about the song. So um, what are the most important elements of the song? What's the story of the song? What's the emotion of the song? What do I want to make sure comes across in this mix? Um, you might internalize those things, but sometimes it's, it's very easy for those to just be like subconscious thoughts and then you don't really pay them mind or move with intention toward them. Uh, I, with every single mix that I do, I listen to the rough and I ask myself those questions and it's just what's happening inside of the song? What is important? Um, if I was given a rough, I'm asking myself like, what did they think was important in the rough uh, when I when I took it over or whatever, because I want to stay true to their intention or whatever. Um, how am I going to change things from scene to scene if it calls for that? Sometimes it doesn't, but uh, what, what, basically what's the roadmap? What's the plan for this mix? And if instead of doing that, we just make everything sound good, we are being, um, we're being audio technicians, right? Like we're, our job is to make every single element sound good. And you can make everything sound good individually, but then you stack them all together and then it doesn't quite fit the picture. So um, at our core, we're musicians and we do this because we love music. So um, instead of being the audio technician that makes everything sound incredible uh, by itself, be the musician that creates the song. Um, help help bring the song to life and, and basically like, what is the song telling you? What is it telling you should be heard here? What is it telling you should be heard in the bridge? All of those kinds of things and bring that to life. So approach mixing with a musical um, direction instead of just a sonic, like how great can I get the drums to sound? I'll make my drums sound more powerful than everybody else's or like that synth should blow my head off and like be the most exciting thing ever. Um, yes, it should, but in the context of the song if that makes any sense. Uh, so there's a number of things out there about like, don't work in solo or blah. Um, I work in solo sometimes. It's not, I don't necessarily agree with that one, but uh, yeah, think of things as the song, not just as the individual elements. The mix does have a lot of energy, but I'm losing the vocal. Um, the synth gets a little bit bitey in the top of it. Um, but I think that everything that you've done here is really, really cool. I would just take another approach to it of, uh, what's important, what should be where, and then put it together with, with that mindset, if that makes sense. Uh, Michael Brower, Ben Abraham, mixing video on Pure Mix, he talks about finding the emotion of the song, and it's one of the best things on the site, in my opinion. Uh, it happens in the first like 10 minutes of the video. Definitely check that one out. He's basically searching for like, how am I going to bring these emotions out? And it's just him listening to the rough and talking about his thoughts as they come. It's really, really cool. So I hope that that is useful. Um, let me know if you have any more questions about that. And we'll hit them. Thank you so much for submitting, Jonathan. Um, I think that like what you guys are doing is really cool. I'm a self-taught mix engineer, started off live and moving to the studio. That's, that's freaking killer. Um, friend is a singer and produced this. The production's amazing. Sounds great. His voice is great. Mixture of live recordings and electronic. Very cool. Uh, and yeah, I would say you did do an exciting mix on it. So great job. And good luck with the uh, with the church. And thanks for submitting. All right. I think my voice has decided that I'm done. But let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here. Dun, 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 dun. Um, I think I hit everybody. If I didn't, yell at me quickly, uh, Andrew. Oh, Juan. Juan, I'm sorry. I got you on here. Here we go. All right, piece of me. Here we are.
Han or Juan, hats off, because that right there is so hard to do with guitars. There's there's a little bit of extra resonance, like extra decay in the low mids of it, but um, one more time. Yeah, there's one little overtone I would I would go after, but it's really hard to get guitars to feel that like powerful and present uh, during low chugs like that, and have them as close like to the listener as as you did. So I think that that is awesome. Great job. Uh, in this section, so a lot happened once we brought the dynamics down. Um, sorry, let me turn off my devil lights here. One second. Um, okay. Uh, a lot happened in the dynamics of the song when we got to that section. Uh, as things came down, one thing I didn't hear was the drums coming down with them. Uh, so they stayed kind of up at the top level. And then the vocal is still pushing at that same level as well. And there's a lot of compression on it that's making some low end resonance happen. So I'm just gonna come out of the last section going into that so we can listen to it again. Here we go. So as uh, as the dynamics came down from everything else in there and it's not pushing into the limiter as much, the track's kind of opening up a lot, right? So the vocal's still super loud. Uh, it's not the limiter's not like pushing things down and gluing them together. So we're gonna need some automation here. Um, Tom Fullery put in a good comment about the old slippery fader trick um, and macro dynamics in the song. I would totally agree with that. He's got some really good comments on here. Uh, yeah, I love a lot of what's going on in this. This is great. Let's keep listening. Here we go. Uh, bass guitar is getting a little muddy and fighting with the kick there, like 80 to 100 ish. So right around here, boom, 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 boom. There's a little resonance in the guitar. Sorry for that terrible example. Here we go.
That drummer, I want to see him run. I bet he runs really fast. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That great track. I lost the snare at the end a little bit there. Um, I'm losing the crack of it. It's got kind of all getting sucked up. I think the uh, the limiter is pushing against you here a lot in a lot of spots. Uh, so I'd watch out for that. You did such a great job on on those guitars. There's like a little couple of resonances here and there. You might have to automate a few things, but. Um, really, really great job on that. The whole thing's powerful. It feels good. Um, I feel like just more automation, a little less compression, so you get some more dynamics. Uh, what Tom said about micro or macro dynamics, I totally agree with. Um, yeah, the uh, the kick feels like it's um, it's got a lot of low mid stuff happening, like one sixty ish or something like that. There's something cloudy about it where it doesn't feel like it's got like that powerful boom with like the attack on it and you know, the scoop in the middle or whatever. Uh, it sounds like there's a little too much low mid, which is kind of fighting with the bass uh, at points, I think. But um, great job, Juan. This is super killer. Uh, great musicians involved in it. Cool song. That singer's great. Um, nice job. All right. Cool. I hope that um, that helps. Oh, cool. Yay. Thanks, Martin. Okay. Uh, I think we are to our last song, which is from Havig. Here we go. You give me that feeling I never thought could be true. Feel that I sense the power of love holding closer to you. That's the road. That day on the walk with you had a feeling that I never knew. Feeling like the river would. Feels hot like the heart pump blood. Every day I will be with you. Every day I'll be with you. Let's listen to a little balancing on the piano real quick. Um, listen to the melody versus the, the bottom hand, the left hand. You so uh, I'm guessing that it's on two separate tracks for that to happen. Otherwise, your velocities are low. But I would probably make those more in balance, where right now it sounds like the left, uh, like we had mics on the bottom of the piano, but not on the top, and we're losing the melody a little bit. Back to our regular program, whatever. Give me that feeling I never thought could be true. Be no doubt, I sense the power of love holding closer to you. That's the right day on the walk with you Had a feeling that I never knew Feeling like the river would Feels hot like the heart of blood Every day I will be with you Every day I'll be with you So that main synth, I would try in this section muting that and then looking at your balance tonally and um, volume wise and the rest of the elements on there. Uh, the kick and snare feel a little dull to me. 
because that synth, that lead synth is telling me what the brightness is. So that's my fence, right, for this song. Like, here's my brightest element in the track. Uh, maybe not with the most top, top end or whatever, but this is the most aggressive kind of thing or whatever. Um, and then you've got the cymbals and all that. But it's telling me, like, here's where the mid-range should be, the upper mid-range. And then the, the kick and the snare feel like they don't have much attack. Uh, I also hear, like, some low mid stuff, um, you know, 100 kind of stuff in the the kick drum um some stuff in the snare that's just kind of like getting cloudy down there uh and i hear all of that because of what the lead synth is doing so let's listen again uh, one more time just because i talked about it Cool. I uh, hope that helps. Let's go over here. I feel like that vocal hook should be up quite a bit. Uh, it sounds like it should be important to me. Very cool, yeah. Um, I like uh, what's going on here in your voice. You had a feeling that I never knew, feeling like the river would. Feels hot like the heart of blood. Every day I will be with you, every day I'll be with you. So I want to encourage you to keep going on doing vocals. Uh, I'm working on changing them out with someone that can sing. So. That's that's an option. I think you have a cool tone to your voice, and it'd be cool to hear you keep developing that um, and and work on getting it better by yourself. Because I think it'd be kind of interesting, right? Uh, it'd be something a little different than like getting the like you know most um, Demi Lovato kind of vocal on here that you could do or whatever, like the tight wispy airy thing. Anyway, you have a cool tone to your voice, and I actually wanted to hear more of that throughout. Sounds like the mic you're doing it on was like an iPhone or something like that. So maybe um, you'd have to work on uh, how you're recording it and all that. But I like your voice in there. Um, so yeah, I hope that that's, that's all useful. It feels very, very loud to me, um, which is causing some other issues. Like it's pushing down the low end of the track and, um, and all that. So you don't need quite as much limiting on there. Uh, hopefully the, the stuff I mentioned as we went through, it's useful. Um, very cool track though. It sounds really neat. Uh, there was a, a bit where the kick, um, got really attacky toward the end there. Watch out for that stuff. Try, um, try doing what I said too, about like muting that lead synth and working on the rest of the elements, uh, without that in context. And then, um, try bringing the fader down on that and then like bringing it back up into the mix and just see if that does something for you. You can always do a save as to try that. Uh, but yeah, great job. Thank you for submitting it. And I hope that that's, that's been useful. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Juan, thank you for your submission. That's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This Friday, Chris DeBron mixing uh, This Is A Life from Mitski. Uh, it is, sorry, that's not the right artist. Uh, Mitski, David Burns on it. Sone Lux is the artist. So make sure you check that out on Friday. It's going to be great. Next Monday, I'll be back for another Awesome People Talk to Andrew Sheps. Uh, where we're flipping the table and interviewing him. We're going to do part two next week, so pretty excited about that. All right, guys, I will see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. See you.